As you see, I like to start with pretty low illumination for the patient comfort for the paracentesis and the lidocaine injection. I start with just a small amount because of the sting, and then once there's some anesthesia in effect, I add more. And then instill viscote in routine cases, but use the cohesive, usually Helon 5, in young patients in intumescent lenses and where there's uh, challenges. For the incision, I make a little groove with this diamond knife 2.2 millimeters by Mastel. Make an incision that's about as long as it is wide and I'm stabilizing the eye with a fine Thornton ring. I start the capsular axis with these forceps in most cases, but in young people and loose zonules and so forth, it takes a cystotome to start. I like to make the capsular axis about five millimeters in diameter to make sure that I have anterior capsule covering the optic. Hydrodissection is with a 26 gauge cannula that Katina makes for me. And I start sub incisionally to get the clean dissection there. And once I get a fluid wave, then I'll use hydro free dissection, push down a little at the equators, and then inject a little more as I turn to the right here. And that usually gives me rotation. I now use the reverse soft shell technique or modified soft shell technique with a little provisc that allows good irrigation aspiration, no blockage for wound burns, and also the nice dome in the viscote for better visualization. I sculpt only enough to get deep into the lens to create the initial fracture which doesn't always extend all the way across, but I start the segment fracturing and removal and complete the fracture to the other side as necessary. I like making small sections, the denser the nucleus, the smaller the sections. And this Alcon Infinity machine has good followability with the Ozzel tip, 100%, and the IP setting. You can see the vacuum settings on the right and the aspiration at 40. Notice the vacuum doesn't always go up to the maximum, particularly during FACO. You can see me starting to protect the posterior capsule with the second instrument as we're fracturing the second hemisection because the posterior capsule is not as well supported. So after I have fractured and I've turned the to position three again, I always make sure that second instrument is under the tip to guard against any chamber collapse and posterior capsule rupture. And I like to keep chopping things as small as possible. It just helps the followability. I don't like to maneuver the tip very much, just let things come to the tip. And always protect the posterior capsule. While the nurse is changing, I put in some more lidocaine and then start the cortex aspiration sub-incisionally because I'm more certain to get the anterior capsule edge with the initial aspiration instead of at the end where the posterior capsule is already then uh, exposed and the posterior cortex might engage the tip for not as clean a dissection. Then I turn the vacuum to the higher limit for this portion of the cortex removal and again always trying to start 
engaging the anterior leaflet of the cortex for much more clean dissection. I then turn the vacuum down again for this lens epithelial cell removal. And this silicon IA tip, the curved tip is what I prefer to reach more of the circumference, usually about 60% of the circumference I can clear lens epithelial cells. And I do this to try to prevent capsular phimosis. Dr. Apple pointed out that this does not reduce posterior capsular pacification. That's equatorial cells that create those alginic pearls. But it does create fibrosis and that's what can cause the phimosis. For the polishing, I use a very low vacuum of just a couple of millimeters of vacuum and low flow, and even turn the, uh, the vacuum off sometimes, and it'll still maintain that engagement of the posterior capsule for a very gentle scrub. And I love this silicon IA tip. I then inject the ProVisc into the bag and make sure that the posterior leaf of the capsule is well separated. And when I start the injection, I have the patient look toward the injector for counterpressure. Once the lens is about halfway in, I have them look straight ahead again. And then keep going with the plunger until I can manipulate the lens with the plunger instead of a second instrument. Removing the cohesive viscoelastic, I use a very high vacuum for good followability and then slip under the lens to make sure there isn't any retained, but usually it pulls it all out with that very high vacuum uh, evacuation of the cohesive viscoelastic, and I turn it until the haptic-optic junctions are 90 degrees to my paracentesis site, because I want to get under the lens with the vancomycin cannula after hydration of the wounds, making sure that we have a watertight situation. And now with vancomycin to nudge the lens until I can get under it with just a little flow of the vancomycin, one milligram and 0.1 ml concentration, and then make sure the chamber is restored to normal pressure. And again, checking the wounds to make sure that they're watertight at the very end, because I think this is the most important thing to prevent endophthalmitis is to make sure the wounds are well sealed. Thank you again for this opportunity.